Hey guys, it's uh, it's been a while. Thanks uh, so much for tuning in here. I took a break from YouTube, which I will explain in a little while and get into the reasons for that. We've, uh, we had a really busy summer and really busy fall area. Eddie runs a custom silage bagging business. He was super busy with that and we have, yeah, taken a break from YouTube, but we've still been farming and we're gonna bring you along again to do some farming today. Eddie is inside with the kids. So every now and then I like to give him a break for chores and he gives me a little time off from the house and we do a swap And so today that's what's going on. It's a Sunday night and I'm just gonna do the minimum chores. There's no feeding to do, no skid steer work. So it's pretty basic and I'm gonna bring you along and show you what's involved in evening chores. Hope you enjoy. I'm gonna head into the barn and start by pushing in feed. We do not have an automatic or robot, robotic feed pusher, so we do that manually. We try to do it several times a day just to get the cows up and eating, and that just increases milk production by every time they get up and eat. Then they're also more encouraged to go through the robots and get milk, so that's why we push and feed regularly. Piper's still here. So since I haven't uploaded a YouTube video in a while, and maybe if you're new to this channel and have never seen one of these videos before, I thought I would recap that my husband, Eddie, and I, we have three kids, ages seven, five, and three, and we milk about 60 cows in our new barn here in southwestern Ontario. We have two GIA robots, so we have a robotic milking system. We have a freestyle barn that is sand bedded, and we have tunnel ventilation. And what else? We have a cool manure scraping system. So we are so thrilled to share all that with you and hope that you'll continue to watch and come along. Oh, and we have a puppy dog named Piper, which I showed you before. So come with me as I continue chores. Now I am going to pick out the pack pens behind me. There's straw in the pack, and so they there is lots of manure in the pack. Ideally, they would poop right where the scrape alley is, but that doesn't always happen. So I'm gonna pick out that extra manure throw it in the scrape alley so the scraper can grab it next time it passes through. That just keeps the pen clean for cows that are calving out. It helps us have to bed it less often. I just have to get my clip here that I can clip my camera onto posts and fences because the cows will most certainly knock over my tripod. So this poor mama here, she had a calf two days ago and she's really not doing well. She I feel good. She's been down, she can't get up. I'm gonna give her fresh water in that pail shortly. And she has a deficiency in phosphorus. Eddie and I, I bead some phosphorus into her and it doesn't seem to be working. So we are going to have to, I think we're gonna have to put her down, unfortunately. Poor mama. That's just one of the downfalls of farming and something that is inevitable, unfortunately and it's just too bad we can't get her up and milking again and healthy but it just doesn't look that way so the straw looks a lot dirtier in the video than it actually is but you'll get the idea of what i'm doing So that's that. Oh, there's one right here. Okay, done. I got hot. I also went and just pulled out some of the fresh straw that's on the edge of the pen because cows don't lay right up to the concrete. So that just gives them a little bit of fresh bedding. And now you can see 
the cozy. Piper's playing with the cows. They don't like to play with her too often. Piper also sleeps here. This is her bed. So you're welcome, Piper. So that's how much I pulled up and threw in the scrape alley and I can see a nice fresh one over there. Thanks, ladies. So picking the pack pens is done. I'm now going to scrape the crossovers and I'll show you what I mean by that. The crossovers are the area, since we have three rows of stalls, it's the area that the cows need to cross over to to get to the feed on the other side. So there's one row of stalls, another row of stalls, one row, second row, then there, this is the crossover, so we're crossing over to the third row there, and the feed is along here. So this is the crossover, it has water bowls, and we have one, two, three, four of them in the barn, so I am gonna scrape those with a scraper. So as you can see, so when I dump the water bottles, it wets all the way to there. And then this side gets really caked. I should have showed you before, but it gets really caked with manure. So if we were to build the barn again, we would put um, water bowls on both sides so that this would just stay a little cleaner. Off to the next one. That's our cow brush. The cows can stand under there and get a nice brush. They really enjoy it. And uh, we would do the same at this one. Put, put water at the other side somehow. I don't know how we would do that with the brush, but we'd figure it out. And now the last two are in the dry cow area. So this is the area where these cows are not milking. They're pregnant, but they're not gonna have their calves within the next few weeks. So they're far off dry cows and they have two crossovers, a large one over there and then a small one right here. So now I'm going to find our fetch cows. Oh, I'll just show you. It scrapes all the manure into the scrape alley there. And then the automatic scraper comes and scoops it all up and, and takes it to the um, pit thing at the, at the back of the barn. So anyway, now I'm going to gather our fetch cows. I think we only have two, but I'm just gonna check. So um, that means that these are cows that have not gone to the robot on their own in a certain number of hours. And I'm going to just find them and stand them up and get them to go into the robot to get milked. So that makes it so they can't cross over and go to the other side of the barn without going through the robot and getting milked first. So I came back to the robot area to check which cows I had to fetch and there was another cow in the sick pen, 1241, which is one of my fetch cows. So what happened was the robot tried to attach to her and she has a, her, her, it, takes, it takes her, she's a heifer. This is her first time ever milking. She just had a baby and it takes her a long time to get her milk down from her, la, her back two quarters. So. The robot tries to attach and doesn't detect the milk and then it, it puts her in the sick pen. 
So all I have to do, which is what I was gonna do anyway, is get her into the fetch area and then manually attach the robots. I am going to actually just rake stalls because there's only one other cow that I have to fetch. So I'm gonna rake stalls and I'm gonna look for her while I'm raking stalls, then I'm gonna bring her up and get her in the robot. Pretty hot. There's my friend fetch cow. Turn out she doesn't want to listen to me. Where are you going? I wonder if she'll, she doesn't usually have to be fetched, so I wonder if she'll go through here on her own. Okay, she's following me like a dog. Come on. I'm gonna get behind her. Come on. She's dripping milk. There she goes, she was being funny. I finished grooming the stalls now, which is basically just like raking a sandy beach and it gets the stalls all ready for them to lay down again and just keeps it fresh and clean and keeps all the manure out. And yeah, and the scrapers are running again to get all that manure down to the end of the barn. Okay, I'm done the stalls. That is definitely my least favorite job of chores. It's hard and it takes a while and the sand is heavy, but I'm glad it's done. And um, I would say my most favorite job is scraping crossovers, oddly. It's a really gross job because you're just pushing poop around, but it's oddly satisfying cleaning off those crossovers and just scraping off the poop. So that would be my favorite. Um, now I'm gonna deal with this cow that's in the sick pen by mistake and get her in the robot, manually attach it. Okay, good. There's nobody in there right now. I'm going to try to do that quickly now. Okay, I missed my chance twice to get this cow in because other ones have snuck in. So I'm gonna set you up here and get her in quickly. I have to run up, come down quickly. It's all, it's all a quick thing and I was messing up because of the video. So I'm gonna set you up here and then get her in. So now it is washing her teeth. 
I have to make sure that it doesn't fall off because her back teeth are really large and it takes a while for her to let her milk down from them. Okay, the front ones are already milking. The back right one is. So this is why we went with the Gia robots and why we love Gia is because we're able to manually attach the robot milker to the cow. If she was kicking a lot, then it would just keep failing and failing and failing and kick her out of the robot. There, she's finally letting milk down from the back left quarter. So now I can take it off the robot off of manual mode so that the next cow that comes in um, gets the milker attached automatically. So I have just about finished my chores in the barn. I just have to go latch up a gate that I unlatched while getting that cow in the robot. We have a gate here that we can kind of close off this robot, this fetch cow section if the cow keeps dodging the robot and she did that once so I just used the gate to um, help guide her into the robot. Alright, I am off to feed calves, but I'm not going to put that on video because I've showed myself feeding calves many, many times. You can watch one of our older videos to go check that out. We have six calves on milk right now, five heifers and one bull, so five girls and one boy. So as I've said before on this channel, we want to show you our successes and failures and everything in between when it comes to farming. So I will show you this slightly embarrassing footage of me putting a new bag of milk replacer in this little pail we keep milk replacer in so that it doesn't get wet on the floor. And yeah, it's pretty embarrassing. Would you believe that I used to bag milk replacer for this company and I slugged these bags around as my job? Well, I only did it for three days and then I stopped, which you might be able to guess by this footage. Okay, so now you ask, why did we stop doing YouTube? The answer is we, um, okay, this isn't gonna work. Okay, so I'm gonna try this instead. Eddie and I are heading to a, a farmer's kind of conference, would you call it? Yeah, a, a bank sort of meeting that they put on. Yeah, the bank that we have our farm mortgage with is puts on a meeting with a lunch, so we're able to attend that today. Um, today was the first real snowfall of the year. So how did you find how did you find that this morning? <laughs> I still don't like winter. Yeah, and he was telling me that if he had all the manure spread on the fields and the fields plowed, it would be fine, but he's getting a little nervous. He's hoping this snow does not stay. <laughs> anyway, so I thought now would be a good time to tell you guys about why we took a break from YouTube and some of the changes that we've had happening at our farm. Like I said before, we haven't been YouTubing, but we've still been farming. One of those changes is that we were able to hire Eddie's nephew, or our nephew, Bryson, and he's been helping a lot with feeding calves and some of the basic chores on the farm, which has been really helpful. As I've also mentioned, Eddie had, has a custom silage bagging business and rents out hammer mill machines. So he's been super busy with that from about, it was a little late. It was, it, it was a little September. later this year. I think it was like beginning of October. It's usually eight, eight weeks of extreme busyness. Yeah, it feels longer. Makes the, sum, makes the summertime and the springtime feel extremely relaxed on the farm. Yeah, so we wanted to have some extra help on the farm leading up into that season. It was busy. So we hired Bryson. We also decided to stop homeschooling. We sent our kids to the local Christian school this September. So that is a huge lifestyle change for us and I'm going to get into the reasons why we did that in a whole other video because I know that some of the viewers really liked watching for our kind of homeschool lifestyle, lifestyle. and I just want to get into why we decided to put that part on hold at least for now. We decided to make the schooling choice back in June and I felt that the summer I was spending too, spending too much time inside 
editing videos. Our youngest daughter, Kylie, was in a crib and she started climbing out of it around that time, June. So I would spend my morning time before the kids got up editing videos, but she started getting up earlier and earlier and so I was losing that time so I was spending time in the afternoon editing videos and it was just too much time inside in the summer when I knew that our kids would be going to school in the fall so I just really wanted to have a summer with them, spending time with them, making good memories and enjoying it. And also I did have goals, I had number goals that I wanted to meet, I had a certain amount of subscribers I wanted to have by a certain time and a certain amount of watched video hours I wanted to have by a certain time. Whether or not those goals were realistic for the amount of time I was putting into it and the niche, the farming niche that I'm in is unknown, but I did not meet those goals and I was feeling a little disappointed that I, I set out with the goal of getting on the screens of people who knew nothing about farming and realized that with social media and YouTube, like you, you kind of, you fill out a questionnaire of what you like to see and, and it's the AI figures out what you like to watch and puts things in front of you that you like to see. So someone who's into hair and nails isn't going to be fed farming content. So I realized that mostly who was watching were farmers. But over the summer I've realized, is that such a bad thing to be encouraging other farmers? Eddie and I have watched some farming YouTube videos and have gotten some really good ideas from those videos. And it's nice to know you're not in an alone when farming can be a really solitary, like you, can really, you can really feel like you're on your own with farming. So maybe that's not such a bad idea to be, to be, to be encouraging other farmers in similar situations as us. Importantly, you're watching, so you are valuable. While I may get discouraged when I see other channels having thousands of views and thousands of subscribers, you, you can get lost in that and forget why you're doing it in the first place. So um, I kind of just had the last few months to get in touch with that and put my camera down, put my phone down. And so having said all that, I will show you guys a little bit about what we've been up to the last um, few months here. Like I said, I did not take my camera or phone out nearly as much, so just bits and pieces of what we've been up to. And hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting us as we maybe get back into this. I don't know what I can promise right now. I'm just kind of seeing how this goes, seeing if this new adjustment to our lifestyle can allow for some more YouTubing. And we hope to see you next time. See you next time.